All right, everyone. Um, today we are going to talk about, I guess, uh, the level of development that you need to get to for your schematic design submittal. Um, I did mention that, yeah, this is a schematic plan, but at the same time, if there are plans that we can develop pretty much to construction, well, our DD level set, um, we're, we can kind of take care of that now. One of those is the roof plan and even, even the elevations uh, to, to a certain degree. So um, the, the roof plan is actually remarkably easy to push forward because there are only a couple of different types of annotations and stuff associated with it. Um, give me a sec to pull it out. There we go. Um, so, all right, so you can already sort of see, don't worry about all the notes and stuff on the side. Um, this is gonna be pretty simple, but what you can see is that there's really not much to it. There are grids, there are some notes and keynotes and stuff like that, and then there are dimensions. That's primarily it. Um, so what I'm gonna show you guys is just a couple of those features, excuse me, um, to, to basically just get this thing ready to go and get it, get it uh, locked in. So um, I guess most notably, the first thing that you guys are probably curious about is slopes. Um, Revit is a very intelligent software and you almost don't have to type anything, sort of, kind of. And I, I take, take, embed that into your brain very carefully and try to understand what I really mean by that. Of course you do have to type things, um, but there are so many smart features that your goal is almost always to not have to type something. So this little slope um, icon, it's actually an arrow, you can't really see the line very well. Um, it's a symbol, it's a slope symbol, and it's just a smart little thing, a feature that you can use um, under the annotate tab. You go to uh, spot slope and there you go. It drops it in right there. So uh, if I happen to grab this thing and change what the slope is to say real quick, I'll jump to like six to 12. That will jump to six to 12 as well. Yeah. When you drag the slope on, does it know what the slope is regardless or do you have to change it? No, it knows, it what, knows the what the slope is. is. Yeah, I, I, I literally can't go into this and change it. It says, it says that. It says what the slope of this surface is. So, you know, right off the bat, you guys know that you just need to show these two slopes. That's one thing. Um, secondarily, some of you, I, I'm not sure if I actually taught view range in detail, um, but a roof plan, generally speaking, for a two-story building like this, is going to show both of your roofs at once. Um, and that's what this does, uh, what you see here. So um, if for some reason all you see is your top, um, your top floor roof, uh, your higher level roof, that's because you haven't changed your view range to, to show the whole depth of the building. So basically what's happening is um, if you look at under extents, under um, view range, you probably have it set up so that the associated level is roof. And when you hit a, when, when it's associated to roof, all you see is from the roof level up, which is just that top level roof. So um, my suggestion and, and the way that I typically do my roof plans is to just associate it with the first floor. Or if it's a, a taller building and you have like two roofs that are right next to each other in level, then you can usually show those in one plan. Uh, it depends on the complexity of the roof. But for this, unlimited. Uh, unlimited just shows like everything in the model. So, but this one is going to calibrate it to the first floor. Okay, so um, that's, that's kind of important. The other thing is right now our roof doesn't really have any patterns or anything like that. So we've got to um, introduce that. I'm not sure which pattern we have loaded. If we don't have this um, material loaded, then I think we're going to have to find one, and I'll show you how to load, load a pat file. But um, let's check what we got. Asphalt shingle. So um, let's go to surface pattern. And we'll just look through the menu here for what type of pattern we could use to represent asphalt shingle which isn't very much. Models, all right, shake. I don't know why he chose shake. It's a terrible symbol for asphalt shingles, but um, kind of works. The index plane is above the bottom of the cliff plane. Um, 
I'll come take a look at it. So basically, uh, yeah, I think what, what you did in yours is that you, ha you changed your first level, but you needed to go to the bottom most one and change that to level one as well. Your bottom two fields should both say level one. Gotcha. Okay, so uh, just uh, bringing you guys up to speed here again. Um, generally with a tight, dense pattern like this, I don't like to represent it in black. Mm -hmm. It's usually a little bit better to show it as a lighter thing because it's a little overwhelming. So I'm going to lighten this up a little bit, but not a ton. Um, and then hit OK, hit OK, hit OK. And there you can see that we now have our pattern. So we're, we're kind of getting this thing almost, we're already almost up to the level of what you see here. Um, the other difference that I want to point out, guys, is um, the, the differences between the top level and the level behind it, the lower level. The lower level is shown lighter because it's farther away from our picture plane, which is us standing sort of above the building. So um, generally that's done with what's called a, an, a graphic override. So you can select both of these roofs, right click and go to override graphics and view. And if you do it by element, you can check this little halftone box and it shows it as like a half, like a little halftone like that, it just lightens it all up. Or if you want the black line around it to stay, um, you can go to override, go to by element. Um, you can just change the surface pattern to be a gray color, like a lighter gray color. And that lightens it up without lightening the, the outline. OK, so we did three things. Um, we changed the view range. We changed, or we added slope symbols, and we changed the uh, the color of the lower roof. Okay, so I'm sure you guys are going to want to see that again. But before I go through that in a little slower way, um, what questions do you have? Yes. Does red read irregular slope numbers? It does. You have to format it to do it. Yeah, irregular I mean, slope. For example, yeah. let's say you think your roof is at the correct pitch. Um, then by placing that, you can check to see if it's at the right pitch. If it's exact? Yes. Yeah, you can. Um, you just have to change the family. So the, the slope, it, it kind of acts like text, and text has some ways that you can change. Like you can, kind of like AutoCAD, you can remove your leading zeros, your ta trailing zeros, uh, that kind of stuff. You can change the, um, where, how much it rounds to. So that's where you would check that this is showing what it rounds to. So, um, yeah, unit format, you could suppress leading zeros. You go down to 256 of an inch if you want to. Or you could change it to decimal, too. It doesn't have to be um, inches and feet, which is uh, like that. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, so... Um, you guys already know dimensions. I think that's primarily the only other thing in the roof plan. So let's move forward on that. Um, the only other thing, uh, there was something else I wanted to hold off on. Nope, never mind. Um, don't worry about this extra little hatch thing that's going on in here. It's like a, it, it's showing attic space underneath the building, but it, it's not critical for, especially in a schematic plan, we don't need to know about it. Okay, yes. How about placing dormers? Um, what do you mean? Oh, the, um, I might, I might not. Yeah, I probably will. I'll have to, I guess. Yeah, it's, uh, you're talking about these guys, right? Yeah, they, um, they get a little funny. I, you have to create a, a face space window family, I think, or something like that. Let me look into that for you. I've never done a skylight family. So. Oh, you have? I mean, I've done families, but they're not under the window category. I'm pretty sure there's a, just like a dorm. Right. Uh, it has its own button. All right. We'll, we'll look into this. I haven't really given this one much thought yet or how I want us to build that family. 